Let's go! Today, we are going to discuss about Asia and Asian regionalism. We have here the countries that are belong to Asia. We have Mongolia, China, Korea, India, Nepal, Thailand, Vietnam, Brunei, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, and others. For North Asia, we have here the countries that are belong to North Asia. We have here the countries that are belong to East Asia. And also we have here the countries that are belong to South Asia. And we have also here the countries that are belong to West Asia. China is home of more than 1.4 billion people based on the 2018 population projection of the United Nations. So after the Second World War, Japan was able to adapt its policies to the dictates of the West and consequently incorporated itself to the global economy. So on the other hand, Singapore has become one of the emerging centers of the different cultures and has turned itself into a great cosmopolitan city-state. All these countries belong to the continent of Asia, a term that originated from the West, particularly from the ancient Greece. Among all the continents, Asia has the biggest population of at least two thirds of the world's inhabitants. It is most probably because of the continent comprises one third of the world land mass. So in terms of economy emerging and developing Asian countries and the Association of Southeast Asian Nation, five or the ASEAN five, which is we have the Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, and Thailand had an average of 6.3% and 5.1% GDP growth, respectively, compared to the world average growth of 3.5% as of 2016. Okay. So in 2016, China was the world's leading exporter of goods, followed by the United States. So what makes Asian nations stronger than ever in the establishment of collaboration of, uh, and cooperation based on respect? So for one, the ASEAN as a regional bloc pays a full respect for the sovereignty and independence of its members through consensus and consultation. So in this slide, globalization, regionalism are compared. So also exposure to the different factors that brings about better homogenization so of Asia and how, uh, and how member states collectively and separately address the challenges they facing are discussed. So we have here, so in terms of globalization and uh, regionalization, uh, they are both related to integration. So globalization, we have here globalization is the expansion and intensification of global relation and consciousness across world time and world space. That is globalization, which is um, focused on the world's uh, really, uh, social relations. So regionalization on the other term had, uh, or regionalization on the other hand, the growth of the societal and economic within a region and often undirected process of social and economic interaction. So that is regionalization. So in terms of scope, it is very clear that globalization is borderless. It happens around the world. While regionalization or regionalism happens only in a specific geographical region. So social and economic uh, reciprocal actions of regionalizations are interact because of diversity. Okay, so that is all about uh, globalization and regionalization. So to, conclu to conclude, globalization and regionalization or regionalism are the same for the reference to integration.
Okay, so their differences lies to the scope. So globalization is worldwide, while regionalism focuses on specific geographical region. So that is the difference between the two, which is globalization is worldwide. Regionalism is, uh, regionalism is uh, uh, focused in a specific uh, geographical region or within the region. So Asian integration did not happen based only on one historical event, for there were different factors that lead to this alliance. So that's all for Asia or Asian regionalism. For more updates about uh, or for more videos about Asian regionalism, so please click the subscribe button and also the notification bell for you to be updated and to learn more. Thank you. Let's go.